Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today we're going to be talking about St. Francis. Yeah, we're going to take a deep look at the life of St. Francis, all the miraculous and interesting things that you may not know about him, and why he's so much more than a statue holding a bird in your garden. One of my favorite, widely unknown quotes of St. Francis is, a single sunbeam is enough to drive away many shadows. I think we need to really look at the light that was in St. Francis that truly drove away a lot of shadows in his day. Looking forward to this episode, guys. Good to see you. All right. It's great to be back. Ryan Delacrosse, myself, Ryan Scheel, and the illustrious Father Richard Pagano, soon to be a celebrity priest, but not quite yet. <laughs> not not <laughs> there. No I don't think I'll ever get there. <laughs> but I, I, I've got to say this. One thing I know about you, Ryan Delacrosse, You've got a Franciscan spirituality. Very good, very good. Absolutely. I don't have the habit, but you don't. I'm willing to listen. Well, you, I mean, you have lots of habits, most of them and, bad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the brown habit so acquainted with the, the Franciscans. But you worked so well with the CFRs back in the day. Well, when I had you were my conversion during, through their ministry. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that's like the, the tie to St. Francis for you personally. I remember all the way back from the very, very beginning when I first met you. That's a, It's a deep tie, and I know I have a personal... Uh, uh, you know, story with St. Francis. And you just recently had a personal experience today, yeah. which led up to doing this show about St. Francis. So I'm excited about unpacking more about St. Francis and really discerning his life. As we're shifting into October, we're celebrating his feast day. Absolutely. Yeah. So outside of the Holy Family and outside of the the apostles and the 72, I don't think you can find another figure in the history of Christianity that has been more instrumental mm. in the life and the, the faith of Christians of all times than St. Francis. I mean, there would be some who would argue that St. Francis is the, is the second most figure, important figure in Christianity outside of Jesus, Jesus himself. Christ, yeah. yeah. And and that, that even goes beyond Christianity, Absolutely. even to the East with our Muslim brothers and sisters. People had a huge respect for the person of St. Francis. He what? really Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He really is one of the truly most unique, interesting, powerful personalities in all of human history, Christian or otherwise, religious or otherwise. He is one of the most fascinating men ever to be born. Mm -hmm. You think about all the stuff with like fame and, and, and memory of, of people of past. And this guy like gave up everything. Mm -hmm. And, and yet we're still talking about him today. Yeah. And we wouldn't have, you know, just this past month, month, we celebrated the feast of Padre Pio. We wouldn't have Padre Pio if we didn't have St. Francis. So that's an important thing to think There's about. There's so many things we wouldn't have without yeah. St. Francis. I mean, St. Francis, when in his famous vision, you know, Francis rebuild my church, he truly did. And it was, the church was in a precarious place. I mean, coming, the the era of the church before his time was maybe the, the low water, low water mark of the church, maybe throughout all of history. It was probably the peak of corruption. The that peak, was the Theophylacti that clan. Was, they, and the, the church was knee deep. In Theophylacti. Yeah. Right. What's I mean, Theophylacti? AKA Scandal the and the worst popes ever. Worst popes in the history of the we church. We did a show on that. Yeah, we so did. All right. That yeah. was the, the we should have called that the Theophylacti. Well, we called it the seven worst popes. And if you want to watch <laughs> that episode, I'll put a link right there. <laughs> Maybe over here. <laughs> so now before we get into talking about all these really amazing things, and I dug up some really cool things that you probably don't know about St. Francis. There is one amazing thing that they need to find out about, and that's to find out how you can get in touch with us. So make sure you go to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're on all those social media platforms, as well as go to our website, catholictalkshow.com. There you'll see every type of podcasting forum that you can connect to in order to listen in. And if you want to view our content, and even if you're viewing right now on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe subscribe button Ding and dong. click that bell because when you click that bell every what time happens? we produce a show it populates in your feed Bing and, bang. We don't, and we don't want you to 
<laughs> Bing bang. We don't want you to miss a show. And we love connecting with you in this way. And we wouldn't be able to connect with you in this way without our patrons. So a big shout out to our patrons who financially support our show. If you're considering becoming a financial contributor, please go to patreon.com forward slash the Catholic talk show. You'll see every way you could support us. And we truly appreciate it. All right. So let's talk a little bit about St. Francis, because that's what we're here to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. This is exciting. I, and I'm surprised, you know, much like, you know, we, we included this beautiful statue of Our Lady. I'm surprised we haven't done a show on St. Francis, because he was held up to be that altar Christus. What a perfect example of communion with Christ. St. Francis is, has definitely broken down so many different barriers. His contributions are huge. So many saints in the tradition of the Franciscan way of life. So many communities that have ministered throughout the entire world. His contributions in academia by way of Bonaventure. It, you know, I mean, it's it's incredible, you know, who Francis is and his impact in the church. Yeah, and, and like, I mean, if you look at Jesus, it's like he came to start a new covenant within the Judea, Judeo-Christian, you know, well, in, in Jewish heritage, mm -hmm. right? Like th this is the renewal of the church. This is another renewal of the church. Absolutely. And one of my favorite images of that renewal of the church and, and what you were mentioning, rebuild my church, this charge of Jesus Christ to Francis. And, and you know, is at St. John Lateran in Rome, which is the principal church, Right. You can you can go behind the statue of St. Francis in the courtyard and look to St. John, St. John Lateran, and it's as if he's holding up St. John Lateran, which is one of the most beautiful, visual, stunning experiences of that revelation to Francis and that beautiful wow. rendition of a statue right near the principal church of Rome. Yeah, and you bring up statue. Now, so many people have turned... St. Francis into, you know, a, a birdbath, right? And, and that's because they, they look at him as, you know... <laughs> Poor St. Francis, that's true. This patron saint of animals and... He's so much better than that. You know, he's... You know, it's like... You're more than that. Flowers yeah. and squirrels, and that's what St. Francis was. But and he wolves. Was, and wolves. But he yeah. was an intense, serious, and devout man. And I think the reason he has been so influential, and I've heard this argued, that there has been no recorded example of any human being who have ever lived who more closely and direct to the point followed radically the teachings of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Maybe nobody ever in history did as much in that following. And that's why his life was so powerful. And many people have attempted, right. many people have strove to, to fulfill the literal, but I think the reason why he was able to live such virtue is because of his humility. Absolutely. You know, he was so humble before God and humble before others that his humility truly broke down barriers and it broke down the barriers of his own sinfulness as well. So let's talk about some interesting things about St. Francis. Number one, Francis wasn't his original name. I don't know how many people know that, but he, I was, didn't know that. Yeah, he was not baptized as Francis. His original name was John. Giovanni. Giovanni di Pietro mm. di Bernardone. Mm -hmm. That was his original name. Now, Say de Pietre? Di Pietro. So okay. John, yeah, John yeah. Peter, Peter. Bernardone. Yeah. Um, but his father was a merchant, right? And basically a trader, right? Merchants were very important at that time in history. Like a lot of clothes, textiles. Silks, fabrics. You know, fabrics they would take yeah. stuff from Italy back. Little so, Gucci guy. Well, well, that's that's funny that you, you bring up that type of brand because he, I mean, essentially, that's kind that, of yeah. what it was. He yeah. was he was such like a, a fascinated with French custom and costume and and culture and so so yeah. So what happened was is that Saint Francis's well, Giovanni Bernardone's father was a trader of clothes. So you can almost look at him as like. A Gucci, right? He was that guy. And what he would do is he would go to Italy and he would get these fine fabrics. Paris. Coming, going and getting these fine fabrics from the Venetians and these spices and all these things coming in from the Venetian traders the in Italy, right? Only and taking it to France and selling it, right? So he made a ton of money. So did Francis do that or his dad? His, his dad, dad did. Yeah, yeah. So that's how their family made their fortune. They were very in, wealthy. And in gratitude, he renamed his son Francis, because that's where he made his money after France. 
Which so now, that's how Francis was born yeah. as a name. Brings a whole, and, and France was really one of the most prosperous countries of that time. Liturgically, one of the most forward thinking and wow. celebratory in the history of the church. Everything circled around France, the politics, the economy, all of that. Mm-hmm. So you could see now this renaming of Francis. This is a whole nother element of what God did in the heart of Francis to confound the wisdom of the world and the power of economy and all of that. It's, I mean, it's awesome to think about. That's amazing to think about. I've never thought about that because I never knew it. Now, what happens when a kid grows up rich and his dad is a fashion mogul of, well, typically you have... He snorts drugs and dies early. Yeah, you typically have pretty (laughs) wild partying animal kids. And that's what happened to John Peter Francis, right? Yeah. He was the... He was the rich kid, right? Yeah. And he had a great life, and him and his friends would just party and booze and, you know. He was already doing that. Well, because of that, he's rich. His dad yeah. is a fashion mogul, right? And he, it's, it's relative in the same in the same world that we're living in now. Yeah. Look at you look at all these rich pockets of kids. Yeah. They're doing the same type of thing, and they get money from their parents, and they go out and they they yeah. get drugs with it. Same yeah. same type of thing in every generation. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the influ- the social media influencers of the day, that's what Fra- Saint Francis would have been like. He'd yeah. have been like, look at my Supreme. look at my gear, look at my new shoes, look at my flex on my Lamborghini. He was that yeah. guy. He was bling. He yeah. was. Uh, he was actually so notorious as a partier that his friends, his nickname was Dominus. Dumbass? Dominus. Oh. Dumbass. Yes, dumbass. I thought he said dumbass. Oh, Ryan Delacroix. Howard, did he say dumbass? Rewind. No, sorry. Dominus. All right, Dominus. Yeah. So basically, he was the lord or the, the king. The dominator. The lord or the king yeah. of partying. They, he yeah. was like, that's, <laughs> yeah, oh, Ryan Delacroix, what are we going to do with you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, his nickname was Dominus, the lord of parties, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he was, oh, if he was alive today, he'd be on Instagram blasting lines of Koga off of his Lamborghini. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you, know? you think you think you were so awesome it was yeah, a party. No, you, have no, no. you have no you can't I, hold the candle. That was lower tier. <laughs> lower tier. Yeah. But obviously it didn't last that way, right? Ah. So why don't you tell a little bit about his conversion? So yeah. from party animal to lover of animals. Right. Wow. And beyond oh, what a good wow. turn. Wow. I, huh? Put the quotes oh, out. No, it was terrible. It in a book. There it was nothing in a book. It was nothing for no. That's your <laughs> no, <right. laughs> So you know the the conversion of Saint Francis is you know just so powerful because after his encounter, you know his whole life when he looked at all of this wealth, all of this riches, he renounced it, and you think about how he was named in a worldly sense by his dad. Now he renounces the world and then embraces poverty and is now sharing with the poor from the benefits and the gain of his household. His dad doesn't like it too much. His dad is furious. Yeah. He imprisons him. Hmm? I didn't know that. In his own paternal home. And I've been, there's a chapel in Assisi still today that was erected around the house of St. Francis. And as you walk into the small little church that you could probably fit, like, I don't know, 40 people, maybe beautifully ornate, the whole life of the Franciscan community and all these different martyrdoms that happened throughout the ages. But on the left hand side, as you walk in, you see this little great metal iron bars and then this little cove that he put Francis in to correct his behavior. His own dad. When he came out, he went into the public square and stripped off all of his clothing naked and renounced the inheritance of his father. Wow. And embraced poverty on a familial level, making poverty his family line. Wow. In Jesus Christ. Like and and there's so much more to his conversion story, but for me personally, when I prayed because I was discerning Franciscan way of life as well, me and too. I I prayed in that church. And I was reading a book on St. Francis in that very paternal home. And that's when I heard Francis say to me, Richard, no two flowers are exactly alike. Bloom where you were grown. And I just knew that that meant I needed to be a diocesan priest. Yeah. (laughs) And I embraced my call in in the Diocese of St. Augustine. But 
the insp- the inspiring value of who St. Francis was. When I watched a movie on him when I was 20, I went into my closet, took all of my clothes, gave them away, took all my gold as an Italian. Oh, it was all fake. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a rich kid. It was all fake, Richard. I had a gold-plated watch. <laughs> It was beautiful. It was like it was like ten dollars. Such a great. Yeah, there's a really cool story about like like the clothes and stuff like that. So, but but before I like allow me to say, allow me to say this because this was like really like a huge part of I my can't journey. Believe this happened to you. And I took all of my CDs, cracked them, trashed them, right? And I had hundreds of CDs. All and, rap, you know, rock. All, a lot of a lot of it was rap. It just started no, getting rap, into rock. It was rock, all like with Lincoln Park. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I trashed all of that and. I just truly had this experience, this euphoria of release from the world. Yeah. And I'm like, I think God's calling me to be a Franciscan yeah. from that very moment. It was, it was, it was freedom. For the you. euphoria from freedom of possessions yeah. is his most amazing deposit of faith. It's that euphoria that attracted all of these men and certainly St. Clair to give of their life in the same way. And that was the generation of this movement of how God was going to save his church. You know, and I mean, I could go on a side tangent of, you know, we're looking at the church and needs right now. There's going to be a rebuild, you know, yeah. and to always have hope. You think, you think Theophylacti, we've got to always have hope, people. Yeah. You know, we do. So I, you know, according to a lot of the the records, you know, his conversion was somewhat gradual, but then also instantaneous, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a story that he was in the marketplace selling silk and velvet for his father. He's you know working at the company. What business. is this velvet? What? Was this? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? what? And um, you know, he's in the middle of a transaction, and then a beggar came up and asked for some money. And he he stopped everything and chased after the beggar, gave him everything, left all the velvet and the silk behind, and gave everything to this beggar that he had in his pockets. And all of his friends made fun of him. They're like, what are you doing? You know? And his dad came down on him like, you can't do this, and yelled at him. Uh, but then shortly thereafter, uh, he wanted to be a soldier. He was really inspired by the Arthurian legends, right? Mm-hmm. And he was fighting in a battle against the Perugians, right? Because it used to be city-state for city-state. And he was captured, and he mm-hmm. was a POW for over a year, a prisoner of war I had no idea in about Perugia. That. When, you're, when you're driving from the north to the south to Assisi, the, the cell that he was held in is right on the roadway. Yep. It's, it's like literally you're right like there driving, as you're driving. It's like, there he was. Yep, that's where St. Francis was in prison. Yeah, and he got sick pretty bad in prison. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that, you know, I think he had that, I think you could see the early stirrings of his conversion in those stories of him and the beggar, but getting sick, being a POW, I think it, you know, you could really see that that probably tipped the scales, right? And it wasn't until a little bit later that, you know, he started kind of getting rid of like, well, I don't, I'm not going to play sports anymore. I'm not going to... uh Hang out with these people I used to so hang out with. it was a progression with. for him, right. not a like total overhaul. Well, Bam. taking mm-hmm. off all your clothes and stripping naked in the yeah. in the streets and renouncing, re- you know. Well, I mean, did it build up to that, it or did. was it okay? But, but you know, mm-hmm. it's like what you were saying about with your conversion that it was gradual, gradual, mm-hmm. gradual until it's not gradual anymore, and it happens, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and you you have a shift, but it's still even gradual today. I mean, it's it, it's what you were sharing this morning about faith is a practice, you yeah. know. Yeah. And and to realize before God will always be sinful, including St. Francis. And that's well, why he always, always mortified his flesh. Yeah, but You know what I love about the Franciscan friars that I've encountered with the Franciscan friars of the renewal? If it weren't for Benedict Rochelle and yeah. that ministry, I would not know the Lord today. Yeah. Right. And but what's so amazing is like these guys literally go and beg every morning at the docks in New York in, in the Bronx. Right at the at the river, and they they bring all the food back and they give everything away and they eat whatever they have, like that is their that's their hand to mouth, yes. right? That's their hand to mouth, and they're so freaking happy. Yeah, and it just blew me away. Yeah, you know, you know. But going back to the story of of the cell, so you know, after kind of going through this, his father was furious. He had him beaten. He had him dragged, forcibly dragged, and imprisoned. Right. Because imagine one of the Kardashians all of a sudden dropping all of their lifestyle, 
going and living as a beggar in the streets of Los Angeles, preaching the gospel and living with the homeless people. Like, they'd be they, ashamed. They'd be like, she, she's lost her damn mind. Yeah, yeah. And they would be ashamed of her. They'd be like, That's good point. They'd be like, wow, this one really has some mental problems. And, yeah. and they'd be like, we need to reach out. And they'd be on the National Enquirer, like, yeah. what's going on? They all have mental problems, a sad yeah. decline. Here she so is so. again. Right. Here she is again. That's kind of how they were treating Kanye West. I mean, it's yeah. like the, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there might be something there with no, that. No, but I mean, like, with a guy can't have a breakdown. Like, people maybe, can't maybe have not, a breakdown. You know? Yeah. You know what I but, mean? But, like, but with this, I mean, that was the public. perception was this is a breakdown. This is a mental breakdown. Yeah. And how dare you forgo all of this, right? All this that I'm leaving to my son. And mm -hmm. like you said, when he mm -hmm. stripped down in an official capacity and renounced, renounced his patrimony, his right to everything, he renounced everything. And there's even some accounts that the bishop of the time because it had to be an official proceeding mm -hmm. took off his own cloak and, put and it covered it Francis with it. Yeah. like what are you doing no no, no, like, no, no you're you're like, awesome. like you're now under the patronage of the church we are oh, your father now. wow yeah. mm -hmm. beautiful you got rid of everything mm -hmm. and let us now paternally care for you nice mm -hmm. so then after that you know he wandered around as a beggar he traveled to Rome he lived with the beggars outside of St. Peter's and lived a mendicant lifestyle until he finally found his way to San Damiano mm-hmm I get a bunch of beggars in my house. They're all my kids. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so why don't you tell what happened at San Damiano? Yeah. So that's that's actually where we get the San Damiano cross. There is a very small church at the base of the mountain of Assisi. I can never pronounce this correctly, but the Portuincolo. And it, he was in that church. There was a cross just like this. And as he was praying in that church, Jesus spoke to him from the cross and said, Francis, repair my church or rebuild my church. And Francis at the time, being in this kind of old church building, San Damiano, nobody was in it. It was just kind of like transients and, and you know, birds and, you know, animals. And, and did you want to share? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. Um, so, you know, from that experience, He's thinking, you know, okay, I'm supposed to rebuild this floors. this church. Like yeah. I could I could rebuild this church, which he did. And and now Santa Maria della Angeli is is built over that little chapel, wow. which is such an incredible place to pray. You know, but Francis in his own and talk about gradual sense of development of of what God inspires in the heart of somebody and how he means to bless and prosper it in his own will, not our own. You know, Francis didn't foresee what he was going to do, obviously, to the extent of what the Franciscans have done throughout every generation since the 13th century so on. Did Jesus Mr. Miyagi Francis? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Francis rebuild my church, and he's going on, and he's putting rocks here and there. But, but he <laughs> paint actually, the fence. <laughs> paint the fence, wax on, wax off. But he actually found something more. While he thought he was repairing a church, what he was doing was laying the groundwork for the Franciscans. Yeah. Little did he know. He got Miyagi'd. He got Miyagi'd. He got Miyagi'd. Miyagi <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that term. Yeah. It was well placed. I just, I just, I think I invented that. Yeah. It's, I don't think I that's don't actually in. Some, Howard, look up Miyagi'd, see if it's an actual <laughs> word. <laughs> so, you know, from there, we, you know, we know the story. I mean, there's, he went out and he found his first uh, 11 followers of the Franciscan order because he was inspired by, you know, the gospel of a certain day, and, and it all leads into the the founding of the Franciscan order. And go and read about that. There, there's a lot to it that I think becomes a little bit dry in the form of a podcast, right, or in the form of a video. But when you're reading about it, there's so many nuances and awesome particularities that it's worth reading. Go find a good account of that. There's hundreds of them out there. There, there are a ton. I, I, the one that I read was, you know, a recent publication, but. One of the most authoritative and useful uh, ones is certainly Bon of Saint Bonaventure. Mm -hmm. He wrote the Life yeah. of Saint Francis, which we would highly recommend. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, certainly check out the Life of Saint Francis. It will truly inspire you. And there's so many different movies out there that have been done in recent history too. Um, you know that that really touched I touched my heart as well, and still does. All right. So let's get into maybe a couple things you didn't know about Saint Francis. Uh, Ryan, I think this one will be interesting to you, that he was one of seven children. So in that brood of children that you have that are your Maybe beggars... Maybe I got a Francis. Maybe you have a Francis. That would be a blessing. 
No, you know, maybe he'll start another one like maybe. the Vincenzos. Yeah, but, or maybe Vinny's gonna run out in you know the middle of the street and <laughs> say, "I hate you, Dad." And I'm tearing off all my clothes. So I, let's see how you handle it. <laughs> Vinny's my boy. He, he, he did that last week. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. And Ryan's like, "Oh no, was I supposed to?" He was, oh, was, I he was making to a the lights out the house around the corner. This happens all the time. Was I supposed to get encourage back to this the topic. Topic. <laughs> Get back to the topic. Let's go. Um, uh, so yeah, one of seven children. Um, I think this is a really interesting fact, and this is something. This is like it blows my mind when I when I read about it. And I first considered that you talked about St. John Lateran, right? Well, there's the fourth Lateran Council during his lifetime, and he traveled to that, and. St. Dominic was there, too. And Dominic and Francis met and talked wow. and hung out. The That's founder cool. of the Dominicans and the founder of the Franciscans. That's like that picture of uh, Pope John Paul II and Mother Teresa. I look at that, and I'm like, the oh, conversation that, that they image. must have had. Yeah, yeah, I love that. that you know? I have that right next to my, my computer. Dominic and Francis yeah. is like the, the, the shoulders that they stand on, you mm-hmm. know? I mean... It's almost like the new Peter and Paul. I mean, this is this is yeah. like in, yeah. it's crazy that to think they were contemporaries. They were contemporaries and met and talked and probably mm-hmm. prayed together. Mm. And how their their charisms of the Dominicans and the Franciscans are so similar and so yeah. different. They're both very focused on yeah. preaching, but then they have this these their individual charisms. It just blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, you look at the 13th century. You look at the 16th century. You look at these these groupings of incredible response of saints that you have, you know, you look at the, the Jesuits, you know, of the 16th, you know, incredible, like that all of them, you know, came up together and lived these radically holy lives. That's why we can never really be very conclusive in our thought on a generation as bad as it may get. You don't know what comes out of it. You don't know what comes out of it. That's a great point. The church yeah, I mean, is like, in a gradual state of you can progress add, you as can well. You wag your finger at the church or you can look pray within yeah. and look ahead and have a charism that's guided by God Almighty. Yes. You know? Every Which person, takes humility. Every person yeah. thinks they live in the worst generation mm-hmm. ever and that their generation is just God forsaken and it's this is it. And everyone mm-hmm. every generation thinks that the end of the world's gonna happen during their generation and the church the ever defeated thing that never falls will fall in their generation. And we're feeling that now, but you know, folks, it's not going to happen unless Jesus Christ come back in a hundred years. They're going to look back and be like, wow, things were really good in the 2020s, right? The church was booming. There were so many of these great saints that were out there. Right. And it's going to happen right now. Another really cool thing. And we brought this up a little bit was how how well regarded St. Francis is among everybody, right? Now, he's considered a saint in the Lutheran tradition, in the Anglican tradition, even in the Orthodox tradition, that St. Francis in the Orthodox, mm. right? And this is, you know, his lifetime was after the schism. Yeah. But he's so powerful that they still regard him. But um, he traveled to Egypt to meet the sultan, the Islamic sultan, the caliph of Egypt, and try <laughs> one to of my convert favorite him. It's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> just like an absolute... How did, he, how did he try to convert just him? Just like an absolute this. tank. He walks up into... <laughs> you know, into Egypt and like, where's the cat? If I want to talk to him, like, well, who's this stinky little boy in, you know, rags? He's like, I'm St. Francis. I want to talk to the cat. I'm St. Francis. I need some food. He's St. Francis. By the way, I need some food too. (laughs) There's a little embellishment going on right now. You know, this is, this makes good listening. But (laughs) (laughs) he goes up to uh, the Sultan Al Kamil, right? And they start having this, um, this exegetical and this theological conversation, and he's trying to convert him, right? Because that's what one would do, I guess, is if you're Francis. So he challenges the sultan to walk (laughs) through fire, to walk straight through fire. That's one of my favorite stories. Why? It's a a challenge of faith. Yeah, let's see, yes. And then the sultan would be like, hey, you got to do it too. Yeah. Uh, No, no, he's like, I'll go first. Oh, okay. All right. So it was the two of them. Yeah. He, he didn't say, hey, you walk through fire. No, he's, he's like, like, I'll yeah, walk yeah. through fire if you will. Okay. Like, as a test of faith, it was like, yeah. um, you know. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's, but the Sultan's like, well, let's not get crazy, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go walking through fire. But uh, obviously, the Sultan didn't convert, but he was, because 
political reasons and sure i mean he's the most powerful in power you is, can't just throw it away a, yeah right but he's so well regarded saint francis that they became personal friends and to this day now that you've heard about the why the franciscans are the protectors of the holy land of all the sites because that was a right granted to francis from the sultan who was the ruler in perpetuity the franciscans were given rights by the caliph to be the protectors of the Holy Land of the Christian sites. You guys hear that? What's that? My mind's blown. Oh, mm-hmm. you hear it? Dang. Right? Are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's why the Franciscans to the day are the protectors of the Holy well, Land. Well, I went there I and know I saw them. You I was them. just saw a couple of Franciscans showed up. They're like, hey, let's do this. Right. <laughs> but it goes I, back. I did. That goes back. So 800 years of. All of these, the graces of the churches of the Holy Sepulchre and the Mount of Transfiguration and the the, the Garden of Gethsemane, all yeah. these Franciscan churches. Beautiful, man. We That's have amazing. to this day. Because he like went up to the salt and was like, what's Let's up? walk, through, walk fire. through fire. Right. Together. He, That's a lot of faith right there. He mm. accomplished what hundreds of thousands of soldiers with swords and armor could not, which is a guaranteed passage for Christians to be able to visit these sites. And he didn't. And he day. didn't do it out of a sense of pride. No. Let's get it. Let's get it right. Like he did it out of a sense of humility. God told him, and to he do did it. it. He did it out of a sense of love. Yeah. Right. And convicted in love. Love is the thing that can really dissolve the barriers. And this is certainly one of the huge barriers that Francis himself broke down. So now we see the breakdown of economy, wealth. Power of France, politics, politics, all that stuff, familial line, inheritance, working for inheritance and lobbying among his brothers and sisters. Who's going to get the most wealth from dad kind of a situation? Who's going to run this business? All of that stuff. He renounces the barriers of the world that are created to get to heaven. Then the political nature of what you were mentioning before think of think of like what shield just said you know hundreds of thousands of, of crusaders crusaders yeah. yeah couldn't do what francis did in one singular act of, of humility and love yeah. and and having the confidence in god that god would want this union god would want this solidarity god would want this humility because it would take the sultan a, a certain amount of humility now to change his posture and his position, which he did. Right. So it's it's just incredible. There's a couple of quotes I want to throw out there for yeah. everybody that I think uh, would be would be helpful in respect to that. Francis of Assisi said, "We should never desire to be over others. Instead, we ought to be servants who are submissive to every human being for God's sake." That's a whole nother level of humility to every person that you come across to be a servant and submissive, submissive, not just a servant, because a lot of people can be like, yeah, I'll serve anybody. I will well, serve the poor. It's the, the poor. class system that we have where it's like, you know, I got this car. I got this house. Yep. And then this next quote goes to that. And this is what I've been preaching about the past couple of days. Pure. Holy simplicity confounds all the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of the flesh. Amen. It's finding that narrow path of simplicity. And that's what I feel most confronted by in the scriptures as of recent, in my own prayer, prayer life. And I'm feeling like I'm being called to live out my promise as a diocesan priest of simplicity all the more intentionally. And I'm very grateful for this show. It comes at a perfect moment because there's no greater <laughs> example of humility and simplicity than St. Francis. What, what a beautiful witness and saint to admire. Now. It's it's opportune that you bring up quotes, mm-hmm. because I think probably the most famous quote of St. Francis is a quote that he never said, which is, what? preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. He didn't say that. He did not say that. <laughs> he is attributed with that all the time, and I know that I've attributed yeah. it to St. Francis many times, too. But he I, didn't, I've told people, and I told it was my saying. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he also tells people that he invented the schwa. <laughs> 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 and the and the term pardon my French. <laughs> <laughs> but no, th- he never said anything like that because he was a preacher. Right? He was, you know, he was a preacher. He would practice preaching. And one of the reasons that he's a patron saint of animals is because he would practice preaching to the fish and the animals too. <laughs> really? Absolutely. That's crazy. But he absolutely did not say that. It was a much later attribution, hundreds of years later. He did say something kind of similar, which is you know, it is no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is also our preaching. So there, there's there's a similar yeah. notion, but St. Francis would never say, don't say well, words we, or preach. Well, we talked about this in other episodes about the, the proof of God, the intellectual proof of God. Mm-hmm. And and this is the, the, the subjective proof of God, right? Through the living, through how you're living your life, how you're united to God in poverty. And how that can change the world. Absolutely. I mean, God's got it all covered, Mm -hmm. you know? The fact that that the world can be confounded, political systems, economy, political strife, warfare. (laughs) Through simplicity and being submissive. Oh, my goodness. Who would have thought? It's power. It's And and it's the power of God. It is the the power (laughs) of God. Absolutely. That is. So it's not him. We have it's to we God. have to share with you, my brothers and sisters, as we conclude this beautiful show on St. Francis, just a little, you know, capturing just a little bit of his life, sharing our testimonies, our experience of Francis, sharing some really good tidbits of information, yeah. because now I'm not going to be saying that St. Francis quoted that. Yeah. So that's good information. I will. But we would be remiss, we would be absolutely remiss without recognizing our sponsors. Ave Maria University is an outstanding Catholic university that preaches such wonderful messages in every type of academic pursuit, but one of the greatest is our faith. And they truly live out the gospel in such a beautiful way in sharing the faith within their academic structure, as well as just a Strictly speaking, classical liberal arts education. It's hard to come by, but it is one of the greatest educations you could ever give to anybody you love. So please encourage anybody that's pursuing higher education, need to go off to college, tell them about Ave Maria University, and I assure you they will not be disappointed with what they will discover at that beautiful place. Um, Another one of our sponsors, Exodus 90, is a great 90-day program for men to join bonds with other men and go on a journey for 90 days of austerity, prayer, and discipline of the flesh, putting on that type of cloak of salvation, of walking with Christ and developing your masculinity after his example. That's what St. Francis did. St. Francis modeled his masculinity, his life after Christ. This is a great program for you. So please consider being a part of that. Yeah, Exodus 90. uh, This year's Exodus begins January 4th. And there really is a lot of elements of the Franciscan uh, mindset that we were talking about, the Franciscan character. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, you know, simplicity, it's a poverty. lot about breaking these addictions to the things that are holding you mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. You know, your phone or or food or pornography. Pornography or mercantilism. Mm-hmm. from the world. Yeah, absolutely. Make yourself poor from the world. Yeah. Right. No, no one's asking you to... Uh, wear rags and tie a rope around your waist, but they Not are asking yet. you. But they are asking <laughs> you to do some mortifications, right? Eat less, take cold showers, right? Yeah. These things are all really important, and they do tie in. So, if you are interested in Saint Francis, this is a little taste of it, and it will help reorient you towards God and who you can be. Again, the the Lent Exodus year begins January fourth. Make sure you sign up early so that you can get your fraternity together with the other men that you'll right. be journeying with. And uh, go to Exodus90.com to do that. So I think it would be a great way to finish this show with the beautiful prayer of St. Francis. Please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. 
where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Father, we thank you for the gift of St. Francis. And in this time, we pray through his intercession to rouse within the heart of this next generation of faithful, new St. Francis's and St. Dominic's of our time. Speak to the hearts of these young people and give them the vision of your kingdom and guide them in your light to respond, respond to our times with the confidence that we draw from the gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. St. Francis, pray for us. Amen. Amen.